A huge shout out to my patrons Trev, Steve, Richard, Carl, Jeff, and my new supporter, Michael. As well as my fine tool partners, SawbladeSharpening.com, Armor Tool, Firm Grip, Fuji Spray, and Wall Control. Couldn't do it without you guys. Thanks a lot. And when it comes to the safety of the table saw, there's nothing more important than having a very good push stick right on hand for you to use when you need it. I'm going to show you real quick how I made these two push pads which are my favorites to have in the shop, and you don't have to worry about whether or not they get cut up. So join me on this one. You're gonna like it. So like I just said, these are my favorite kind of push sticks, and I actually have one right here that I've been using for the past year, and it's got tons of use, as you can tell. But, it no longer has its little catch in the very back, so it makes it a little dangerous to use. So I took the time finally to make one of my own in three different types of setups. The first two that I have, one is very thin. It gives me more control if I have a thin piece of stock going through the table saw that doesn't have a whole lot for a wide one like this to rest on and tilt and whatever. So having this one for that is going to be handy. This one is going to cover all the other bases, and it gives me a little bit of a pinky grab to control the left to right movement and make sure that I can keep it nice and straight. This one is just like my old one, and it's going to probably get a lot of use at my bandsaw for resawing and pushing pieces through. So if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Be sure and click the subscribe button over there, turn on the notifications, and comment down below if you like this video. Hit that like button too, I'd appreciate that. I post videos each and every Saturday, and I intermingle SketchUp videos between project videos, so you guys can learn how to use SketchUp to build things just like this. Now this particular push pad or push stick, however you want to term it, uh, can be made out of any kind of wood that you want, whether it be scrap wood, hardwood, or plywood. Uh, just pick something that you can make or laminate up to about an inch and a half thick. I wouldn't go any thinner than that just to allow yourself plenty of room uh, for blade clearance as you pass it over the blade. So I plan on making mine out of some scrap uh, red oak that I have in the shop. I've got a whole bunch stacked up on my uh, lumber rack up there that I had planned on using for just some small cheese boards. but. I have never got around to doing that, so <laughs> I'm going to take some of this and uh, make my push pads out of it. With my pieces oversized a little bit in length, I've got clamps at the ready, I've got some wood glue, and some Starbond CA glue with uh, some accelerator. I'm going to use the CA glue that will act as a permanent clamp while the tight bond has time to adhere and cure. The clamps are just going to make sure that everything is pressed down long enough for this Starbond CA glue to adhere properly and keep the pieces nice and tight. Now with Accelerator, you only have a tiny, tiny bit of time to make sure that these pieces get put together and clamped down, roughly about three to five seconds. So that's why I've got them ready to go. With all the bases taken out of the clamps, I'm just going to run them through the table saw to cut them to final dimension and clean up any rough edges from the glue ups that were slightly off. In order to make this push block ergonomically comfortable, you're going to have to tilt the handle at a certain degree because naturally you're going to be standing over it and your hand is going to be tilted in such a way that a straight up dowel is going to be kind of uncomfortable. So without changing the table on my drill press, because I only have two to drill anyway, I've taken a piece of wood about three quarters of an inch thick and just clamped it to my table. Now the angle of this is just arbitrary. You can pick whatever you want. This is just comfortable for me. After taking a little bit of time to draw out the look of the handle on this piece of oak, I took it over to my bandsaw and did a cutout roughly of the handle. And then after that, took it over to my 
oscillating spindle sander to clean up any of the rough edges left by the bandsaw blade. Now I'm over here at my router table and I'm going to round over quarter inch roundovers on all four sides of the handle to make it comfortable to hold. Also stop shy about a quarter of an inch uh, where it's going to meet the base of the block itself. So that way it will be a nice and clean fit inside the dado that I intend to put this in. Well, if you're liking it so far, don't forget to hit the subscribe button right there, turn on the push notifications, and don't forget to comment, like, and share down below. I'd love to know your processes on maybe your push stick that you have in your shop and why you like it or dislike it. Meanwhile, over here on the table saw, I have my dado stack set up to the exact width of the handle that I just cut out on the bandsaw and smoothed out the sandpaper and uh, it's ready for installation. So I'm going to cut a quarter inch deep dado that will match the chamfer that we did on the router table just a little bit ago. And whenever it is inset in that dado, it should match up pretty close. The last thing that I need to cut with the dado stack, which I have decreased in thickness to about 3 eighths of an inch, is the dado that I'm going to have to put right here on the bottom that will go transverse to the length of this board. This will house the catch that will clip onto the wood as I push it through. The last thing that I needed to do was to cut some strips that are going to fit the grooves that I just made. Once I glue them up flush on one side, then I'll just run them through the table saw to flush trim them up on the other side. Okay, so I know what you must be thinking. Why did I go through all the trouble to make a push stick or a push pad like this when I already have this orange one here with the grippy on the bottom or this micro jig? Okay, if you've ever owned something like this, you always have to make sure that it either goes between the blade and the fence or you have to take a little bit of extra time and preset this before you go over the blade to make sure you don't cut it up. With something like this that has a sacrificial bottom, if you're in the middle of a cut and realize, oh crap, I forgot to set this up, you don't have to worry about it. You grab it, you stick it on the wood, and you push it through. And cutting the bottom of it is not gonna make a dang bit of difference. So having these nearby your table saw or band saw or whatever is awesome. This is a great, great push stick to have and you don't have to worry about damaging it because when it gets to the point where it's like this, you can just take it, throw it away, and make you a brand new one like this. Well, that just about wraps it up for me. I had a great time making these, this one especially. It'll come of great use along with this one at my table saw. This one will probably go over at my band saw. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, be sure and drop them down below. I wanna thank the patrons that are right up here as well as the tool partners down below. I could not do it without you guys, so I appreciate it greatly. Don't forget to check out my other videos that are right over there. Build videos and SketchUp videos, I have them all. Take care, guys. I will see you on the next episode. Boom!